Sonic the Hedgehog gets a CGI makeover that we cannot unsee. Blizzard blindsides the heroes of the Storm community, and a well-loved character is finally coming back to Supernatural. All of these stories and more on this episode of Looter News. Happy Friday, everybody. It's December 14th, 2018, and this is Looter News, your weekly recap of some of the biggest news in geek, gaming, and pop culture. I am your host, Josh Ball. Let's get into the news, shall we? Sonic the Hedgehog, one of the most recognized characters in video game history. His name brings to mind many iconic sights and sounds, like hearing him wind up his spin dash, seeing those trademark red shoes, the unmistakable sound of gold rings being collected, or even the way his blue fur covered arms and legs look so toned and muscular. All right, if you're thinking that last one sounded a bit off, you're not alone. Earlier this week, the producers of the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog movie dropped a new motion poster featuring the new Sonic from the film, and, well, there are some issues. Many fans of the character and series quickly took to social media to point out that they were pretty disturbed by the new character design that was teased, especially with his weird legs in particular. Just when fans thought it couldn't get any worse, the film's producers had a hold my beer moment and released a new poster the next day with Sonic sitting on top of the Golden Gate Bridge, but with very human looking legs. Now, being that this is supposed to be a live action film, no one really could have known what to expect when Sonic was taken from his cartoon state that we're familiar with and digitized for live action, but we can assure you this was not even close to what many would have expected or hoped for. How final or locked in is this look for Sonic is yet to be seen, but hopefully much of the current public outrage on social media is taken into consideration because clearly Sonic hasn't skipped leg day. And this uh, new and certainly interesting take on Sonic brings us to our question of the week. What do you think about the new Sonic movie? Are you hyped for it? Are you, do you hate it? Are you hoping to see Tails show up? Or maybe even Knuckles? They're probably going to be yoked out of their gourd too. Who knows? Let us know what you come up with in the Facebook Live chat right now, and we're going to pick some of the best and most creative answers to read on air at the end of the show. Now, this next story is one of those timeless classics. It's about... Well, it's about saving people and hunting things. You know, the family business. That's right, as you probably guessed from that intro, we are referring to Supernatural, which is currently in the middle of its 14th season. This week, the show's producers tease the return of a previous character that many fans have been asking and waiting for for a very long time. Yesterday, it was revealed that none other than Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who some of you have seen more recently as Negan on The Walking Dead, and he's gonna be trading in his barbed wire bat for his Colt revolver when he returns for the upcoming 300th episode to reprise his role as John Winchester, the father of Sam and Dean on the show. It was also revealed that there would be some other guest stars, though their identities haven't been revealed just yet. It's certainly been a long time since fans saw the head of the Winchester clan, as the last time he appeared on screen was over a decade ago at the end of the second season. John Winchester's character on the show has long been dead since then, but you know, this is Supernatural, so you can expect they'll easily find a way to circumvent that somehow. Now, if you're a Supernatural fan who's pumped by this news and can't wait to see the episode, don't worry, you won't have to wait long as the special 300th episode will be airing on February 7th on The CW. <clears throat> For those of you who love binging Marvel shows or who specifically are fans of The Punisher on Netflix, you are in luck. Netflix announced this week that season two of The Punisher will be airing in January. With that only being a month away, we can assume that we should be getting a trailer for it sometime in the near future. Joe Quesada from Marvel recently said that season two is, quote, crazy stuff. It's just crazy stuff. It's going to be, it's going to be exactly what fans want. And Barenthal Barenthal is Barenthal, man. He's a force of nature, dude. End quote. So, yeah. There hasn't been any confirmation yet on what story season two will tell, but there are heavy rumors that they'll be adapting the Slavers story arc, which, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it's basically uh, revolving around Frank Castle setting his sights on a forced prostitution ring and making sure he destroys it, you know, in Punisher fashion. Whatever way that ends up working out for Frank, let's all just hope that they close things up at the end of the season and don't leave anything hanging because, let's be honest here, we can all probably safely assume that Netflix will be canceling the show weeks after it airs, as Netflix has been wont to do with the other Marvel Netflix series so far before it. 
We're going to take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about that shocking Heroes of the Storm news that Blizzard dropped yesterday, and then later we'll be sharing your thoughts and chat about the new Sonic the Swole Hedgehog movie, so be sure to stick around. You spent all month trying to come up with the perfect gift. Look at that face. So excited. That's a good face. And that's a less good face. That's a painful, fake joy face. That face will haunt you. You'll see that face in your nightmares. The good news? You never have to see that face again. Loot Crate delivers awesome pop culture gear and happy faces every month, all year round. Unbox something awesome at LootCrate.com. And we are back. Our first gaming story this week goes out to all my fellow gamers out there that have always wanted to get that extra competitive edge when they're competing. I mean, when I was playing football, I wanted the best helmet. I wanted the best cleats. I wanted the best pads. In basketball, it was all about having the newest Jordans. Well, thanks to the shoe company K-Swiss, competitive gamers have some new footwear on the way to give you that competitive edge that you've always wanted out of the shoes that you're wearing while you play video games. All right, look, I get how ridiculous this sounds, but we're living in the future here, a future where high-performance footwear for gamers is a real thing. Prominent esports organization Immortals has partnered with K-Swiss for the upcoming new shoe, the Grandmaster. Now, I'm not quite sure what a high-performance shoe brings to the table for gaming, which I try to do shoeless as often as possible. And apparently, one of the main functions of this new high-performance shoe is the ability to quickly uh, you know, become shoeless and remove the shoes as fast as possible, hands-free. So basically, if you're taking it down mid lane to try to secure that sweet, sweet victory, and right at that moment, you just need to kick off your shoes, but you just can't take your hands off the keyboard, well, guess what? These are the shoes for you. Now, if high-performance gaming footwear strikes your fancy, be on the lookout for the Grandmaster coming around summer of next year for 110 smackers. Our next uh, gaming story this week is a huge bummer for fans of Blizzard's Heroes of the Storm, as it was reported this week that the company is planning to scale back development for the ambitious MOBA. In a blog post on Blizzard's website, J. Allen Brack and Ray Gresco stated, quote, We now have more live games and unannounced projects than at any point in the company's history. We're also at a point where we need to take some of our talented developers and bring their skills to other projects. As a result, we've made the difficult decision to shift some developers from Heroes of the Storm to other teams, and we're excited to see the passion, knowledge, and experience that they'll bring to those projects. Now, on top of scaling back development and shifting employees around to other projects, Blizz has also abruptly cut its entire Heroes of the Storm Global Championship Esports League, much to the chagrin of the entire Heroes of the Storm community, both its players and its casters many of which relied upon the money that they were making as part of the HGC. It's a shame that so many folks have been negatively impacted by this news from Blizz, and I hope that this has a positive outcome for all involved. In the end, I expect that this transition for Heroes of the Storm only means that Blizzard has some kind of newfound focus on providing incredible experiences in some of the new content or the new games that they're launching, and only time will tell if this upheaval in their gaming community will have been worth it. We're closing out our final gaming story this week with some mad props to everyone's favorite hybrid handheld video game console, the Nintendo Switch. Reggie Filzame, COO for Nintendo of America, spoke this week about the success of the Switch when talking about the lineup of games released for this holiday season. And it turns out that the Switch is performing at historic levels. Not only in newer releases like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, along with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate absolutely killing it right now, but some of the Switch's bigger early titles like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and Super Mario Odyssey are still incredibly popular. So popular, in fact, that over 50% of Switch owners currently have all three of those games on their consoles. The company has never seen 50% of consumers own a single game for a console, let alone three games, which is a testament to the quality of those games. Nintendo has no plans of slowing down either with more first-party games in route and a greater focus on third-party and indie titles on the Switch coming in 2019. Nintendo set some lofty goals for themselves at the start of this fiscal year, saying they wanted to sell over 20 million new Switch units. Pretty aspirational, seeing as there's about six months left with nearly 15 million more Switch consoles needing to be sold to reach that goal. Phil Zemay is incredibly confident they will hit their mark, and I gotta say, 
The gaming world is a better place when Nintendo is kicking ass, so I'm confident that they've got the mojo rolling and will hit that mark too come next summer. We've got one more quick break. When we come back, we're going to be reading your answers from chat about your thoughts on the new Sonic the Roid Hog movie, so do not go away. Hey everyone, it's finally winter and as we unpack our sweaters and scarves, we're bundling up the best in geek and gamer gear in this month's theme, Scavenge. We have searched high and low, sneaked and slinked, roved and roamed, and are excited to announce that we've got Fallout, Dungeons and Dragons, Escape from New York, and more. So get ready to slay the bells and whistles, including, of course, our monthly t-shirt and pin, and this month's theme, Scavenge. Don't let this be the winter of your discontent. Head on over to LootCrate.com and sign up today. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. At the top of the show, we asked you your thoughts about Sonic's new look in the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog movie, and we have got your answers. First up, we've got Noel Willett says, I like Sonic's new look. If they're trying to make a purely meme movie, like a gaming version of Sharknado or something. Didn't know where that was going, Noel, but uh, I like that you tricked me up a little bit there. Quinn Hook says, I love Sonic and I love the look. Well, Quinn likes it. Um, I'm assuming that Quinn likes getting beefy because that's what Sonic is now. Trina Nicholas says, new Sonic can not unsee. And of course, it's in my backyard of San Francisco. And then we've got a fourth answer who says, oh yeah, well after what they did to the Super Mario Brothers, this new, this new Sonic thing isn't actually all that bad coming from Brian Johnston. Solid answers, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. That's gonna do it for this week's Looter News. We are off on a brief hiatus for the next two weeks for the holidays, but you can catch a new episode of Looter News when we come back in the new year on Friday, January 4th. Until then, be sure to also check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash lootcrate to see our latest episodes of our trivia show, Educated, and our awesome theme and product reveal videos. You can also follow us on Twitch and Mixer at twitch.tv slash lootcrate and mixer.com slash lootcrate respectively to know when we go live for our gaming live streams and other fun events and giveaways that we do there. And with that, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, I am Josh Ball. Have a great weekend and a happy and safe holidays, and we will see you in 2019. Shaboy!